Hello, I'm Brian Atkinson and welcome to UK Aircraft Explored. In this video, we shall cover the Spitfire Mark V's Rotor and de Havilland propellers. I shall give you extracts from wartime Air Ministry manuals and show you my relevant reworked colour AP diagrams. I hope you find this interesting. The propeller is mounted on a universal propeller shaft of nickel steel. It is hollow throughout its length and furnished with a flange near its rear end, on the forward face of which is bolted the reduction gear wheel. The universal propeller shaft is suitable for use with both rotor and de Havilland types of propeller. The Rotor RX5 Oblique 10 propeller, fitted to the Spitfire 5, was manufactured by Rotor Air Screws. The company was formed in May 1937 by Rolls-Royce and the Bristol Aeroplane Company. And the name Rotor was a contraction of the RO in Rolls-Royce and TOL in Bristol. During the Second World War, rotor propellers were considered to be leading edge technology and was fitted to many different types of British aircraft, including Hurricanes and Spitfires. During 1943, the company name Rotor Air Screws was changed to just Rotor. With the arrival of increased performance of Merlin engines, it became necessary to use air screws of pitch ranges greater than those obtainable with the hydraulically operated internal cylinder type of rotor variable pitch propeller. The construction of the external cylinder group of rotor variable pitch propellers, such as the RX510, offered a pitch range of 35 degrees, which was adequate for all normal requirements of constant speed operation, including diving conditions up to the maximum indicated airspeed reading permitted. The RX510 has three blades and an overall diameter, that's a swept circle, of 10 foot 3 inches. The air screw has a right hand tractor or rotation and is hydraulically operated from coarse pitch of 64 degrees to fine pitch of 30 degrees. The air screw shaft was a number 5 neck down parallel splines type and the propeller blades are of Jablo wooden composite. Manufactured by Jablo Propellers Limited based in Manchester, Jablo specialised in the manufacture of wooden propeller blades. Here's a diagram showing the construction of rotor Jablo wood blades. The propeller blades are made of Canadian birch veneers fused together with synthetic resin. Moisture sealed flush fitting brass leading edges and a Jablo synthetic resin glass hard covering reinforced with phosphor bronze gauze. Due to the British shortage of duralumin material during the war, the application of the Swartz process was used where special machinery pressed a hard metal mesh coating and cellulose sheet over the entire propeller primarily consisting of soft wood, usually pine or fir, to produce very hard composite wood propeller blades. The blade pitch angle of the propellers are controlled by an externally mounted, hydraulically operated, double acting cylinder moving over a stationary piston. The cylinder actuates a link mechanism having crank action on the blade roots, converting the reciprocating linear motion to turning of the blades in their sockets, that is, to change the pitch. Here is a cutaway view of the propeller. Operating oil is provided by the engine lubrication system, a supply from which is boosted in pressure by a pump incorporated in an engine-driven governor unit. The function of the AX61 governor unit is to admit and release pressure oil to and from alternate sides of the stationary piston, and so adjust the pitch angle of the blades to maintain constant propeller torque 
and therefore engine revs per minute. In the Spitfire 5, the operation of the propeller is limited to constant speed control. The pilot's responsibility of judging the correct selection of revs per minute is relieved in certain types of governor unit by interconnecting the throttle and propeller controls so that movement of the pilot's throttle lever to change airspeed will automatically give correct combination of boost and revs per minute. The propeller spinner is a CSA type ES11 spinner. The shell of the spinner is supported by a front support plate which is attached to the barrel bolts on the air screw. These bolts pass through rubber bush mountings fixed to the support plate and the nut and washer on the barrel bolts are locked in position by a split pin. The rear end of the bolts pass through similar mountings on the back plate supporting ring at the rear end of the spinner. With Rotor CSA type spinners, the words to lock painted on the spinner shell must align with the key slot in the back plate by inserting the special key. No other implement should be used and moving it in the direction shown by the arrow. The locking means of the CSA type spinner consists of a movable locking ring having a number of slots enlarged at one end through which the studs fixed to the shell flange engage. There is a locking spring and a central pin riveted to the spinner back plate and a hole in the spring allows the central pin to enter it. Before we move on to the de Havilland propeller here are a few additional views of the rotor propeller as fitted to the fighter collections Spitfire 5 EP120. The de Havilland Variable Pitch Air Screw Type 539 was fitted to the Spitfire Mark V and manufactured by de Havilland Propellers at Hatfield and Bolton. De Havilland Propellers being established in 1935 as a division of the de Havilland Aircraft Company. In June of 1934 a license was acquired from Hamilton Standard Company based in the USA for the manufacture of variable pitch propellers. The de Havilland 539 air screw has three blades and an overall diameter of 10 foot 9 inches. The air screw has a right hand tractor or rotation and is hydraulically operated from coarse pitch of 54 degrees to fine pitch of 34 degrees. The air screw shaft was a number 5 neck down parallel splines type. The propeller blades are of duralumin material. The de Havilland 539 bracket type variable pitch air screw is of the 20 degree pitch range group and here is a diagram showing a representative type. The angular setting of the blades of the 20 degree pitch range air screw are two pitch controlled and used in conjunction with a constant speed AX61 governor unit. The airscrew governor unit consists essentially of a governor which rotates at a speed that bears a constant ratio to that of the engine crankshaft. The governor controls a valve and in the central position of the valve and the governor flyweights when the whole system is stable, the valve closes a port which connects the engine high pressure oil system through a boost pump mounted within the governor unit body to the air screw cylinder. The propeller constant speed control governor is fitted to the lower part of the reduction gear cover and provides for the mounting and actuation of a governor unit for use in conjunction with constant speed propellers 
of either de Havilland or Rotal types, and a vacuum pump for the operation of certain navigation instruments. The propeller speed control lever is located on the throttle quadrant. The de Havilland 20 degree air screw has a positive course pitch position which is obtained in the extreme R position of the control lever when the air screw blades are held at their maximum course pitch angles of 54 degrees and the air screw functions as a fixed air screw. The bearing shafts move forward with the cylinder and at the same time slide along the cam slots in the counterweight brackets. Since these slots are set at an angle, the brackets and therefore the blades with which they are attached are caused to rotate towards the fine pitch position respectively. In this diagram, we can see the de Havilland bracket type air screw in the coarse and fine position. This control lever adjusts the compression of the constant speed governor spring. Movement of the lever, therefore, upsets the governor flyweight system balance and the governor valve is allowed to admit and release oil from the air screw. The altered blade angles increase or decrease the torque absorbed by the air screw from the engine, the speed of which decreases or increases until the state of balance is again achieved within the governor flyweight system and between the power output of the engine and the torque absorbed by the air screw. Movement of the lever forwards causes an increase of engine revs per minute, while movement of the lever rearwards results in a decrease in engine revs per minute. The given engine RPM should correspond closely with the given position of the control lever. The de Havilland extended type spinner shown here is similar to the CSA type spinner. The shell of the spinner is supported by a front support plate which is attached to the barrel bolts on the air screw. These bolts pass through rubber bushed mountings fixed to the support plate and the nut and washer on the barrel bolts are locked in position by a split pin. The rear end of the bolts pass through similar mountings on the back plate supporting ring at the rear end of the spinner. When the spinner is placed in position on the spinner back plate, the slotted cone enters a hole in the block on the back plate, and by means of a screwdriver passed through a hole in the spinner shell, the cam pin is turned causing the plunger to move into the slot in the cone and so lock the spinner shell to the back plate. A spider is mounted directly on the air screw shaft and the hollow root ends of the blades are bushed and mounted on the spider arms. The blades are free to rotate on their respective arms but are locked to brackets which support counterweights. Centrifugal forces acting on the blades during rotation of the air screw are taken by the halves of a barrel, the flanges of which clamp over the blade root shoulder. These forces also cause the counterweights to move outwards from the air screw shaft axis, but their direction of movement is restrained to circular paths around their respective blade axis. The counterweights lie at an angle to the front of the respective blade roots in the direction of flight but behind the blade roots in the direction of air screw rotation so that in moving outwards from the air screw shaft axis they also move rearwards in the direction of flight. Since the counterweights and the leading edges of their respective blades are on opposite sides of the four and a half planes passing through each blade axis, the leading edges will move forward when the counterweights move outwards. That is, the pitch of the blades will be coarsened. For transport purposes, the assembled three-bladed propeller is packed in a wooden packing case of Y formation, which is illustrated here. The propeller is secured firmly in position in the case where the blades rest in three wooden cradles which are felt lined and shaped to accommodate the blade roots. 
Spinners are normally packed in a wooden case, as shown in this diagram. The open end of the spinner rests on the bottom of the case and is prevented from sliding by felt-lined blocks which are shaped to accommodate the diameter of the bottom of the spinner. The blocks are slotted and through the slot passes a bolt which is fixed to the case itself. The blocks may therefore be adjusted to suit any diameter of spinner and are locked by means of nuts screwed on to the bolts. And now a look at propeller related tools used by the ground crews. Here is a diagram showing the Samson propeller extractor. Where the air screw has been fitted on a taper engine shaft for a period of a hundred hours or more, the Samson extractor must be used for removal of the air screw. In this way, possible damage to the snap ring groove will be obviated. Normally, the tool is only used to remove an air screw from a tapered spline engine shaft. The flight toolkit is made up of those tools necessary for removal of the air screw from the engine air screw shaft, or alternatively, mounting the air screw on the shaft. The tools included are also sufficient for the routine maintenance of the air screw. The flight toolkit shown here is typical of that used for bracket type air screws. The squadron toolkit, as illustrated here, is typical of that used for bracket type air screws. They included a spanner, extractors, spring clips, box spanners, key, and a wooden support, and a blade puller. Finally, here are some additional views of the de Havilland propeller as fitted to the Shuttleworth Collection's Spitfire 5 AR501. Well that's it for this video, I do hope you found it interesting. Please click the free subscribe button below and ring the bell to get notifications when future videos are posted. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.